could use the wagon wheels? <laughs> oh, yeah! We should use the whole wagon! Sort of like a steering wheel. <laughs> if you want to ride in a race, maybe your wheels shouldn't ride off without you. George needed a way to keep the two car parts together. <laughs> he knew just how to do it. First, he put the steering handle through the hole in the bottom of the boat. Then he nailed the boat to the wagon. <laughs> we did it! The car was almost ready. Okay, we've got one, two, and three. But we still need... Hey, kids. Aren't you entering the derby race? It, it starts in ten minutes. Oh, no. But we're missing a car part and we don't know where to find it. Well, I'd offer to help you, but, um... We know, we know. No help allowed. Well, if you see anything you need, you're welcome to it. Thanks, Grandpa. <laughs> Whoa! I forgot to put on the brake! <laughs> George and Allie had their break. Well, it looks okay. We can test it on the way to the race. <laughs> Racer's ready. On your mark. <laughs> Get set. <laughs> it works! <laughs> hey, guys! You made it! <laughs> Go! George and Bill were neck and neck. Come on. Faster. Uh-oh. Meet the winner, Farmer Rinkin's Wagon. It was a rather unusual entry, but it met all the rules. George couldn't wait to get his cart back. Hey, George! <laughs> huh? <laughs> like my cart? I 
Sally traded it to me for an old backpack. <laughs> you want to trade that pony for the cart? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm, no thanks. I need this to help me carry stuff to the swap meet. <laughs> a swap meet is where lots of people gather in a big space and trade stuff. You should come, it's fun. Who knows, you might find something I would swap the cart for. <sighs> Annual swap meet tomorrow only. One person's junk is another person's treasure. <laughs> Oh, this is great, George. I'll bring all the stuff I want to get rid of. Oh, no, no, that's the keep pile. That's the get rid of pile. <laughs> of course. You never know when you might need a sombrero. <laughs> the next day, George hoped that between his sticks and the man's stuff, they'd have something that Bill would trade for. Got it. I need it. Yeah. I like her sombrero, though. You want to trade the sombrero? Sure. You want the cart? It's a deal. Oh, wait. I just traded it to Mr. Quint. Don't worry. Maybe you can make a trade with Mr. Quint. That's a dandy fishing reel, but unfortunately, I just swapped the cart with my brother for this singing whale. Forty-nine tons of krill on the wall, forty-nine tons of krill. No! George found Mr. Quint's brother, Flint, but Flint had traded the cart to his other brother, Wint, for a back massager. Went to traded the cart to Mrs. Rankins for some soap on a rope. Ah. And Mrs. Rankins had traded the cart to Vicky. <laughs> Sorry, George. I just traded the cart to some people from the city. George had worked so hard to get that cart back, and now it was gone for good. There's nothing here that I want. See, I'm an artist. I work with wood, and what I'm looking for are unusual sticks. <laughs> well, these are the best sticks I've ever seen. Thank you. At last, George had a cart. Of course, he no longer had anything to put in it, but that wouldn't last long. was confused. This looked like where he'd been before. And that was the same clown, which meant... George was back where he started. How did he do that? Why, hello there. I thought you were going to the zoo. <laughs> I see. You must have gotten on the downtown train by mistake. You see, there are two tracks. The track with the up arrow goes uptown to the zoo. And the track with the down arrow goes downtown to Fisherman's Wharf. So, to get to the zoo... <laughs> up arrow, precisely. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I 
don't understand. Where's George? I told him to get on the next train. If George didn't get on the uptown train, then maybe... Could he have gotten on the downtown train by mistake? Because I never explained that there were two trains. That must be it. Oh, hang tight, George. I'm coming. <laughs> what? George, hold on. Stay on the train and go to the zoo! Uh -huh. <laughs> Can you make me a dog? Yes, I know it's a giraffe. It's the only thing I know how to make. Your attention, please. Due to mechanical difficulties, there will be a one-hour delay on the Uptown Line. One hour? That's it. Subway's out. Running's in. See you, Reginald. Cheerio! George loved riding on the subway, but he also couldn't wait to see a... dragon? Ah! Not only did George see a dragon on his way to the zoo, he also saw... An Italian opera singer, some Russian dancers, and a Swiss yodel. Finally, George had arrived at the zoo. Yourself. And faster than I did. Now, let's hurry and get over to the zoo because I think they... Close at 4 p.m. Sorry. Oh, but it took us all day to get here and, and we really wanted to see the Komodo dragon. Isn't there anything you can do? <laughs> well, nothing wrong with a monkey in a zoo, I suppose. Thank you. <laughs> so, why did it take you all day to get here? It's a long story. Ah. Well, little advice. Next time, take the subway. It's faster. <laughs> <laughs> so, how wide do you want this poster? One, two, or three Georges wide? Huh? One, two, or three Georges wide? Not only were things the right size for George, he was the size. Okay, let me see. This is some um, uh, so some one George, and uh, do, 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 do. this is uh, this is two Georges, and uh, of course uh, this is um, this is our uh, three Georges wide. <laughs> George knew it'd be easier to handle a poster that wasn't wider than he was. Great! How are we gonna nail this to be three Georges tall if you forgot the George stick? We don't need a stick. There's George. One George. Two Georges. Three Georges. There, three Georges tall. Thanks, George. <laughs> Pick a cake and the cake. You know, a one George arm size is perfect for the average freezer. <laughs> Cake decorations. It was all so easy with George measurements. The cake was in the freezer. The poster was on the wall and the star was no trouble at all. George was ready for his guests. <laughs> Hello, 
now, Giorgio. But not ready for their size. I hope we're not too early. Ah, I see you've got a two Georges tall apartment and furniture to match. Very unique. Hey, 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 he's coming! George is right. We have to hide. Oh, 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 too small. What's that plant I can hide? Oh, 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 oh. Hi, everybody. Surprise! A party? For me? Gee, th thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, me too. Uh, 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 how about some music? A George-sized apartment was fine for little monkeys, but not at all good for people-sized people. Ah! <laughs> This was more like it. Everything was the size it should be. Except maybe the cake. Six o'clock. Only an hour left. And George had to start over. George wanted to get the sizes right, so he decided to measure everything first. This time, George ordered the right-sized cake. And poster. And chose a better ladder. George, are you home? What is this? To celebrate my birthday? Oh, wow. All my friends and my plumber, my dentist, my barber? They were in your address book. George put everything together. Uh, he did? Oh, thank you, George. Maybe it wasn't so bad no. being a little monkey in a big <laughs> world after all. And there was one thing his arms were always the right size for. Safe at home. Now that George was a numbers pro, he was having a great time keeping score, watching the game, <laughs> and rooting for Marco to hit a home run. Here's the pitch. Looks like yeah. it could get out of here. It's going, going. <laughs> a fantastic <laughs> grab by the outfielder. That was the third out. Now the Tiger Babies are up. Sorry, hungry people. My mom's on the phone and I have to talk to her. I wish there was someone who could help you, but there isn't. <laughs> really? You can help? Uh -huh. Awesome! But but first I have to see if you're qualified. Oh. It fits! You got the job. Good news, people! This very nice monkey is taking my place. <laughs> I just served customer number seven, so eight is next. Hey, Mom, what's up? <laughs> After seven comes eight, Nine, then ten. This was going to be easy. George had no idea what number came after that. Um, uh, hmm. Excuse me, I'm number 16. I should get my drink before 17 gets his pretzel. You can't serve 16 before you serve 14. What about 13, monkey? Uh, 12 comes before 13. Uh, 11 is next. Calm down, people. What's the problem? Uh, he's serving us out of order. Seriously? Do you know your numbers? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, the nice job. Good, 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 good. Cool. So what comes after ten? Well, I'll show you. It's easy. Just cover the first part of the number with your hand and look at the second part. See? One, two. So eleven, then twelve. Awesome! Do you want me to take over? <laughs> as fun as it was to hand out popcorn, George was eager to get back to the game. Hey, kid, where you been? Um... Oh, never mind that. It's clutch time. It's the last inning, bottom of the ninth. The score is tied four to four. There are two outs, and Marco's up to bat. But he hurt his foot playing shortstop, and now he can't run. Can you run the bases for him? Huh? So if I hit the ball, will you run for me? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, kid. Let's go! This is it, folks. After two scoreless innings, it's the Cubby Bears' last chance to break the tie. Wish me luck, George. Ha, ha! Here I won! Here I do! Uh, just a reminder, folks, three strikes and you're out. Come on, Paul. Keep going! Keep... Home run! Marco, home run! I did it! I hit a home run! Oh. Oops! George, run! <laughs> if bases were like everything else, then George should run them in order. First base first. Second base second. And third base third. Bring it home, kid! Bring it home! So proud. That was a fine hit, Marco, and a fine run, kid. Kid? There he is. 